Hey, it's Irreverent Aegis here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to get the trifecta achievement in Lair Marsalock from the perspective of a tank. Of course, the trifecta achievement being the hard mode, the speed run, which is 35 minutes here, and the no death all in the same run. Interestingly enough, we decided that our favorite new setup was to use a DK healer in all of our trifecta runs, so you're going to see a DK healer here in our run. Here's the first boss. There are only a couple of mechanics to look out for here that can ruin your no death. The first is usually a combination of the bear fearing everybody combined with not interrupting Selene in time when she starts shooting out those poison balls. That needs to be interrupted as it does a lot of damage over time, and if the bear fears you and fears everyone in the group, especially your interrupter, that can often lead to a death. The second thing you just saw a second ago, we get the poison cone mechanic, which looks a lot like what happens in Asylum Sanctorum. Pretty much just don't kite that through the group. It's a lot more forgiving than Vass, so it's not that big of a deal if you don't kite it properly, but it's still good to move out of the way. Next, when this spider comes down, the spider's gonna target somebody immediately with a heavy attack. You see there, the spider wanted a heavy attack, I suck at life over there. And the problem was, he didn't replace his dodge or move them, so that spider will always start out with a heavy attack regardless, so even if you get taunt immediately, sometimes it targets somebody else. That's about it for the mechanics that can kill you here, other than that, it's pretty much just gonna burn this dead boss down as quickly as possible fight. While we're watching some trash pulls and starting the third boss, I want to go over what gearing I have as a tank for this trifecta run, and honestly for a lot of four-man content. I am wearing Drake's Rush and Arcasis. Those are two group ultimate generating sets. I generate a ridiculous amount of ultimate for the group. Every 30 seconds I pop a potion to proc Arcasis, which gives 43 ultimate to everybody, and then I also bash every 18 seconds to give major heroism for 12 seconds, so the ultimate regeneration is ridiculous. I particularly like that setup in dungeons where you have big burst phases on bosses where you only have a small amount of time to deal damage, or when a boss goes invulnerable for a certain amount of time and then goes uninvulnerable, and you need to just simply drop your alts coordinating together. If you have them up, it makes it really easy to coordinate those burst phases and burn down everybody. So our cases and Drake's Rush together is just this magical combination for a lot of these trifecta runs. We pair that with our DK healer actually wearing Master Architect. So if we have Master Architect and our Cases and Drake's Rush, pretty much our major Slayer uptime is absurdly high. So it's a really great combination to have with your tank wearing those two sets and your healer wearing Master Architect. Regarding the no-death component of this boss, as the tank, the main things for you to look out for are the heavy attack, which happens very rapidly, so making sure to block that and always be aware of if it hasn't happened in a while, make sure you don't drop block. Standing in those circles, those are big resource drain circles, so a lot of the times if you stand in the circles too long, your stamina is going to be gone, your magic is going to be gone, and you won't be able to block it, you won't realize it, because it's a pretty quick resource drain if you stand in them. And then obviously, the dragon breaths. Everybody should, should avoid those, as they take up a lot of map. There's one right there. Just staying out of that so it doesn't kill you or kill your group members. Other than that, you pretty much just need to group up the adds after every phase. We need to kill this boss three times for it to actually die. So when it's dead, you just group up the adds to make it go quicker. Now you've heard me mention a couple of times that we like to bring DK healers into our four-man trifecta runs. And that's interesting, of course, because nobody plays DK healers and everyone thinks they're trash. We love them. First, their utility is just insanely high. Usually the healing requirements aren't that huge for four-man content, so you can actually take advantage of the entire skill sets of DKs for all those support and buff rolls. For example, Engulfing Flames. It's much easier to get the 10% buff from Engulfing Flames than it, on a healer than it is on a tank, because that 10% is based on spell damage. Next, you actually have time to get off the stagger rotation with Stone Giants, because on a tank, you drop block when you hit that ability, which can get you killed if you hit it at the wrong time. Much easier to keep your uptime on that when you're not worrying about dying when you're on a healer. 
And next, the other reason why we prefer a DK healer as opposed to a DK tank is, personally, I can't stand playing on DK tanks in four-man content. I think they're garbage compared to other tanks. I know that's an unpopular opinion, because everybody just loves DK tanks for some reason. I hate them. I think every other tank class is way better than DK tanks in four-man content. But anyway, let's talk about this boss. If you have high DPS in a well-coordinated group, really the only threat in this fight is the Lurcher, because you'll avoid all the other mechanics if you are able to kill the Lurcher quickly and then kill that center tree really quickly when the shield breaks. Anyway, I'm sure you're familiar with the fight if you're preparing for a trifecta. You kill the Infester, somebody synergizes the seed, everybody drops their dots on the center. The seed is then synergized in the middle, breaking the shield. And then everybody just kills that as quickly as possible. As the tank, all I do is make sure that I apply Breach on the tree and I keep the Lurcher away from everybody. The most important thing there on the No Death is taunting the Lurcher as soon as it comes out. So I always scan the room because it comes out in a random spot. So I always scan the room once the first one dies because it'll come out and light attack somebody to death. So as soon as the first one dies, as the tank, you look around really quickly, pick it up before it has a chance to light attack anybody. Other than that, if you do it slowly, you'll end up getting a lot of stranglers. If you do it quickly like you saw in that part of it, you pretty much don't get any stranglers because you kill it too quickly and the game doesn't have time to summon stranglers. This next boss fight that we're going to see is the strangler boss, as I call it, and it's probably the most frustrating boss in the entire game, especially if you're not 100% sure what you're doing. So hopefully the tips that I provide here are going to help you understand how to do this fight. The most important thing I can emphasize here is to have your tank actually in the group, taunting all of the stranglers as they pop up. A lot of groups have the tank on full-time horver duty blowing up the horvers. While you certainly can chain in the horvers, sometimes that is hard to do the entire time because your first job is again to taunt those stranglers. Why do you taunt the stranglers? Well, the stranglers are going to be hitting the spiders that go up and hit Marcelock and make them fly down. If you taunt the stranglers, guess what? The stranglers are no longer facing the spiders, but they're facing you, so they attack you instead of the spiders. So that's one thing that a lot of groups get wrong here, and it actually adds a lot of time to the fight if you're not taunting the stranglers. So what we do is we have our third DPS, or in this case, our healer, on the full-time holy duty. Next, as the tank, you should always make sure that you try to get aggro on those bears as quickly as possible. They don't necessarily one-shot people, but they do quite a lot of damage, and the damage can stack up here quickly. So making sure you get those bears is very important. Next, after the dragon comes down and flies back up, it's always going to spawn a lurcher. They're kind of tricky to taunt, and you can often taunt them when they come up and it doesn't take, so make sure you actually apply taunt, because they will absolutely wreck anybody in your group with a light attack. Again, as the tank, you would want to bring the lurcher into the cleave over here, that way the DPS can focus on just killing the stranglers and then the lurcher will go down in that cleave. Meanwhile, again, keep applying taunts to every strangler that comes up. Mind your resources, of course, because there's a big resource drain here, and that lurcher will one-shot you with its heavy attack if you are not prepared. This boss usually is the speedrun killer for most groups going for their first speedrun or going for the trifecta. Hopefully those tips on what you should do as the tank are helpful for you. The boss, ideally, will only need to fly down three times. When he flies down the first time, you can actually hard lock him at 60%. When he flies down the second time, you can hard lock him at 55%, and then obviously the third time is when you can hard lock him or finish the boss at 50%. So ideally, you just wait to drop all of your ultimates and nuke him when he flies down each time. That way you can reach those hard locks and actually kill him in those three pulls. Because the worst thing is having to kill stranglers and kill lurchers, because sometimes this dungeon does glitch out, and it takes a lot longer than it should for the boss to actually fly down during this phase. As we finish up this boss fight and move on to take on the last few sets of trash pulls, I want to go over a couple of things that you want to do to set up for the heart mode. First, your healer is going to want to have an interrupt, that way healer can get the interrupts on Selene, 
again, it's just like the first boss where she'll shoot out those green balls everywhere. So interrupting that's very important. And then secondly, as the tank, you're probably going to want to slot a self-purge as it is very difficult to survive the fire dot that constantly gets put on you. I believe every three times you're light attacked by the boss, you get set on fire. And that fire dot is really big and it's, it's possible to heal through, but it's hard to heal through. Of course, I do want to mention the caveat to purging it is when you purge that fire dot, it does an attack called backfire that attacks everybody in your group and hits them for 5 to 10k depending on their spell resistance. So it's important to be cognizant of everyone's health before you purge yourself. Other than that, you'll just want to make sure that you have good resource management as the tank. So if you have any skills that help with resource management, make sure to put them on your bar. So you see me actually change my skills here. I'm going to put my self purge on hexproof and on my back bar you're going to see me put on mortal coil for the extra stamina, which I'm pretty sure I actually don't hit a single time during this fight. The other thing that we like to do for this fight in particular is have our healer run barrier on that master architect bar rather than warhorn. Barrier is really nice here because there's a lot of damage and if anybody gets hit by that fire dot that I get hit by, there's another mechanic that puts that fire dot on everybody if they don't roll dodge through it. That barrier will save a lot of lives and also the barrier is going to save a lot of lives if Selene can't be interrupted right away. So combine that with, of course, our cases in Drake's Rush, and we have a pretty high uptime on Barrier as well. I do want to point out that this video guide is for the trifecta, not for the hard mode. So if you're looking for a really detailed hard mode guide for your first hard mode clear, actually check out my video on how to tank a layer of Marcelon hard mode. This I just kind of go over the main highlights, and you should already be familiar with all of the mechanics, or at least most of the mechanics, if you're actually attempting the trifecta. I know I've already emphasized this several times, but I'll keep emphasizing it. Drake's Rush in Arcasis is fantastic for trifectas. During this phase, when the dragon flies, we actually get a bunch of adds. And if we can just burn down those adds every flight phase by just dropping alts on a combination of on the boss and on the adds together, it really trivializes the amount of damage you take here, as the adds can stack up if you don't burn them down quickly. The seed or curse mechanic is crucial to understanding how to get the trifecta here, so I will go over how to do it in this video, even though again it is covered in more detail in my how-to guide. Starting right around 60% and then on a timer and thereafter, Marcelock is going to stop moving and then he's going to spit out a seed onto the map. As soon as Marcelock stops moving, and this is going to save you some time, as soon as he stops moving and is about to do that, that is everyone's cue to start attacking Selene. Selene has a damage shield, and you need to destroy the damage shield in order to purify or cleanse the curse. So as soon as Marcelock stops moving, everybody should go over to Selene and beat the crap out of her until that damage shield's gone. Then they need to go over and synergize the seed that Marcelock put on the map. Once they synergize the seed, one of the three cleanse pads on the map is going to show as glowing bright green for the people that synergize the seed. At least three people need to synergize the seed every time as the odd man out, so that means the person who doesn't see the same green place as everybody else is the one that needs to go synergize, that's the person that's cursed. So here it's actually me, so everybody call that pad one, and I didn't synergize the seed, it was too far away, and off of the tank won't. I can if it's next to me, but most of the time I will ignore it. So anyway, since everybody said one, that means I wouldn't have seen one, so one was the one that I had to get. Next, we're going to see the sweeping fire breath, and like I mentioned earlier, it's crucial that everybody roll dodges through this so they don't get hit with the fire dot. Because again, if multiple people get hit with the fire dot, one, it's really bad because the fire dot itself does a ton of damage, but two, it's extra bad because if multiple people have to purge that fire dot off of them, it sends out multiple backfires in the group, and if a DPS gets hit with two of those at the same time, it'll probably kill them. We always have a barrier up, or we frequently have a barrier up because of the high uptime on ultimates, so barrier actually does help quite a bit if somebody does inadvertently get hit with one of those sweeping fire breaths. Here we're seeing another seed phase. I was actually going to go synergize it, but then Marcelox started his Fusro Da, and if I stayed there I probably would have ended up killing at least one of my group members, so I decided that the other three in my group could handle it just fine without me, as again, you only need three people to figure out who's first. 
to help with the no death, let's talk a little bit about positioning. So one of the most important things for the DPS and the healer to do is to line up with the nose of Marcelock. So as Marcelock moves or rotates, the DPS should also move or rotate, so they're constantly in line with Marcelock's nose. The reason why is because if they get too far to one side of Marcelock, Marcelock does a wing slap. And as you know from other dragon fights such as in BSS, the wing slap hurts a lot. It will often one-shot. The next thing that I'll point out about positioning is the healer or whoever your interrupter in the group is should always be aware of where Selene is and line himself or herself up accordingly so that way getting the interrupt is easy. During the seed phase here you'll actually see me go over and synergize it so you'll see the mechanic. There I see that pad 3 or the brown pad light up bright green so I call out number 3. So it looks like Picasaur over there is the one who didn't see 3 so he ran over and synergized on 3. At this point in the fight, Marcelock was at 13%, so I called out commit, which meant that we were just going to drop the house on Marcelock. We weren't going to ignore the ads because they can still nip away at people and kill them. Obviously, we were going to still get the interrupts, but this meant that we were, if a seed phase was going to come up again, we were going to ignore it because we were going to kill Marcelock before we had to deal with that mechanic again. Because the longer the fight goes on, the more likely it is that we're going to have to deal with some odd situation with death. You'll actually see right here, on this next Rusha Da, Pika almost ate it because he went the wrong way. Luckily, he rolled dodged right at the last second and saved that no death right at like 1%. So there you go. There's our Nature's Wrath achievement. There's no title. There's no skin. There's really no proof that you got this unless you have a YouTube channel. But there it is all pride right there. If you liked the video, please like or comment on it, and feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more content like this.